Disney announcing some changes coming to its popular attraction, Splash Mountain. This after fans said that that ride reinforced racial stereotypes. Now the ride is being reimagined to feature characters from Disney's 2009 film, The Princess and the Frog. Magic Kingdom Splash Mountain ran dry. After 31 years, riders took their final splash down before it closed for good on Sunday. Seems like we're taking a look back at the history of something with a controversial past today. This past week, Tiana's Bayou Adventure opened at the Magic Kingdom in Disney World. And in today's video, we're going to be taking a look back at the history of its predecessor, and what is considered to be one of the greatest theme park rides ever created, Splash Mountain. But to tell the history of this ride, we gotta start back at its controversial roots. In 1946, Disney released their 11th full-length feature film titled Song of the South. The film is based off the Uncle Remus stories by Joel Chandler Harris. The film uses both live action scenes and animated scenes. The live action scenes star Uncle Remus and this kid. I'll be honest, the live action parts in this movie are pretty forgettable. But the animated sections in the film are top tier Disney stuff. And lucky for us, since the ride only displays the animated sections of the film, that's the only part we gotta talk about. The animated sequences star Br'er Rabbit, Br'er Fox, and Br'er Bear, voiced by Johnny Lee, James Basket, and Nick Stewart respectively. The plot of all three animated segments is Br'er Fox and Br'er Bear attempt to capture Br'er Rabbit to eat him. Very easy to follow, I know. And the three animated segments in the film are directly taken from the original stories by Joel Chandler Harris. And each sequence also includes an original song. And you probably know about the controversial nature of this film. And I won't go too deep into why it's controversial because that's not what this video is about. But if you do want to know more about the history of the film, you can find plenty of articles and videos on that topic. But in a quick summary, the film's depiction of the South is heavily criticized due to its, for lack of a better word, glamorization of plantation life of the former slaves. And yes, the film does take place after the Civil War, but it's kind of hard to know that when it's not stated in the film. And this controversy surrounding the film isn't new. Even when it first released, it was considered offensive. And due to this, uh, history regarding the film, it has never had a home media release in the US, and there seems to be no plans for a release on Disney Plus either. In 1974, a new animatronic show made its debut in Disneyland, called America Sings. This may seem very off topic, but I promise it does play a role in Splash Mountain's history. The attraction was created to celebrate the United States Bicentennial, and starred Sam the Eagle, no, not that Sam the Eagle, this one, and also starred Ollie the Owl. The plot of the show was that Sam and Ollie take the audience on a tour through the many eras of music in the United States history. But Sam and Ollie weren't the only animatronics included in the show. There was actually a very large amount implemented into the show. The show building also rotated to reveal the next scenes to the audience. That doesn't have anything to do with the history of Splash Mountain, I just thought it was kind of neat. Since the attraction was created to celebrate the bicentennial of the United States, once that was over, it kind of fell out of place, especially due to its placement being in Tomorrowland. And an attraction based off the history of American music doesn't really fit there. And due to this, plans for the attraction to close began. But there was an issue. If the attraction was going to close, what would happen to the numerous animatronic figures? They couldn't be destroyed, that would just be wasteful. So where could they go? In 1983, while sitting in traffic, Imagineer Tony Baxter had a few problems that needed solving. The first issue was that there needed to be some sort of attraction that would attract guests to the Bear Country area in Disneyland, which was often empty due to it only having a single attraction, the Country Bear Jamboree. The next issue that needed solving was what to do with all the animatronics located in America Sings that were soon to be without a home. And the final issue was the want of a log flume ride to be included in the Disneyland park somewhere. And the answer to all these issues would lie in one of Disney's most controversial films, Song of the South. And this idea was perfect. The Song of the South characters fit the theme of Bear Country. And the lead animator for Song of the South, Mark Davis, designed the characters in America Sings, meaning that they would have a similar design to the characters from Song of the South. So they would look like that they belong together. And if you make a log flume attraction in Bear Country, starring the animated characters from Song of the South, and put the animatronics from America Sings in it, all the problems are solved. It was brilliant. But now we have a new problem. If the area is named Bear Country, but bears aren't going to be the only animal included in the area anymore, it would need a new name. So its name was changed from Bear Country to Critter Country. 
After this, plans for the attraction began and the ride was to be named Zippity River Run and would include scenes directly taken from the animated segments in Song of the South. As I said before, the ride was set to be named Zippity River Run, but that name was changed to Splash Mountain because, and I kid you not, the CEO of Disney at the time, Michael Eisner, wanted to use the attraction to help market Disney's upcoming film, Splash. And that's not all, because the studio executives also wanted a mermaid character to appear in the ride, but thankfully, this request was denied, and they met in the middle, changing the attraction name to Splash Mountain, but ended up not including a mermaid character, and that was probably for the best. At the time, Disney officials said that they would not be expecting criticism for its Song of the South theming, due to the ride only including the film's animated characters. Well, that aged poorly. On July 17, 1989, Splash Mountain had its grand opening in Disneyland, and it was immediately a success. And shortly after its opening, a version to be opened in Disney World's Magic Kingdom was greenlit, and it will be opened on July 17, 1992, exactly three years after the Disneyland version opened. And this is the version we'll be taking a look at because it's the version that I'm most familiar with and because it's the version with the most similarities to Song of the South. The outside of the attraction is designed to look like Chickapin Hill, which is where Br'er Fox resides in the original Song of the South movie. The story of the ride is that Br'er Rabbit wants to leave home and head to his laughing place, but Br'er Fox and Br'er Bear follow behind to catch him and eat him, just as simple of a plot as the movie had. The ride directly takes scenes from the movie, but changes some of them to make more sense for the ride. Particularly before the big drop at the end, we see Br'er Fox capture Br'er Rabbit in a beehive. But in the original film, Br'er Rabbit gets caught in some tar. After Br'er Rabbit gets caught by Br'er Fox, the riders climb up the long and somewhat stressful lift hill, where at the top we see Br'er Rabbit about to be roasted. But Br'er Rabbit uses reverse psychology on Br'er Fox and Br'er Bear, and get them to throw him into the briar patch. Well, Br'er Rabbit, I'll sick all this at the skin, yeah. Go ahead, Br'er Fox, skip me with your lots. Look for the me? Don't fling me in that dry patch! Dry patch? Which is actually where he lives. And since he lives there, he's a master at navigating through the patch safely. And as Br'er Rabbit gets thrown into the briar patch, the riders do as well. And this scene of getting thrown into the briar patch is directly taken from the original film. If you look at the version in Disneyland, you can see all the animatronics that used to reside in America Sings that are now being used in Splash Mountain. And if they didn't fit the theme of the ride, they could just be put at the end. So every character had their place. And if you look through the ride, you may notice that Sam the Eagle and Ollie the Owl don't make appearances. And that's because, allegedly, the Ollie the Owl figure had its outer cosmetics removed and was turned into Br'er Rabbit, while the Sam the Eagle figure was turned into Br'er Fox. Rest in peace, Ollie and Sam, I guess. And ever since its debut, Splash Mountain has been enjoyed by guests and will continue to run in its exact same state until the parks close permanently. Well, maybe in a perfect world that would be the case. In 2020, it was announced that Splash Mountain would have all its Song of the South theming removed and would be re-themed to The Princess and the Frog due to the film the ride took inspiration from being controversial. And this past week, Tiana's Bayou Adventure opened in the Magic Kingdom. And I gotta say, from what I've seen online, it seems fairly lackluster. And that seems to be a common opinion. There's way too many scenes of just nothing. And while Splash Mountain had scenes without animatronics, there was still stuff to look at. But in Tiana's Bayou Adventure, there's nothing to look at. Unless you really enjoy looking at a swampy environment. Credit where it's due, while most parts of the ride are pretty lame, the animatronics and the finale of the ride actually look pretty great. And the version in Disneyland has not opened yet, so I have to wait and see if that looks any better. And if you want to ride the original version of Splash Mountain with all its Song of the South theming, all hope is not lost. Because the original version of Splash Mountain in Tokyo Disneyland has remained the same, and at this time has no plans to be rethemed, and that is the last version of the original Splash Mountain left in the world. And that was the history of Splash Mountain. It was almost certainly Disney's most controversial attraction, but it was also one of their greatest. And it would definitely be missed by many fans across the world. And if you enjoyed this video, a like, subscription, and maybe even a comment would be greatly appreciated. And if you want to watch a couple of my other videos, I'll have a few linked in the description. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.